Welcome to my first real ballet physics tutorial and in this video I'm going to create a simple ballet physics problem program, the base program basically which I'm going to use later on. So it will have nothing too fancy for now, so it will have one plane on the bottom of the map and there will be one or two objects for now, so probably a sphere, sphere and uh, maybe a box, I don't know. So it will be a, re a really simple program for now and uh, let's actually let's try uh, to create it. First of all, before I go on, I would like to just show you what I have here already. This is my main OpenGL program, which I'm always starting off if I start with a new OpenGL kind of 3D library. Uh, I have a camera because it would be relatively boring without camera. By the way, you can follow along with, uh, for example, DirectX as well, but uh, you have to write this kind of stuff yourself, so the camera and... Uh, and I commented out uh, the skybox, I don't, we don't really need a skybox right now. So I have nothing fancy in here, just clear the screen, update the camera position, and uh, that's pretty much all. And also I have a... yeah, I have nothing more in this... actually let me delete this kill skybox as well. Okay, so this is my main OpenGL program which I'm going to start with. We don't really actually need this collision or collision plane, I just left it here accidentally we don't really need this function either. So what we really need is basically the camera and of course then to know the basically how the OpenGL works. So this is kind of prerequisite thing. Uh, right, uh, so I think let's start it and uh, first of all I want to show you how you can draw a a sphere very simple in OpenGL using GLU library with GLU quadric although this is a bit outdated but uh, for demonstration purposes this is the simplest way to draw a sphere without having to go on manually setting the vertices and the faces so we first of all need to create an object which is called GLU quadric quadric OBJ and this is actually a pointer and I just call it quad okay and here somewhere for example in the init function let's, let's initialize it to initialize it just use the function glu new quadric so quad equals to glu new quadric that's right it's a simple function return with a pointer to a glu quadric and also we should delete it at the end of the program so right here I just use the glu delete quadric and quad so this is kind of just OpenGL stuff, nothing uh, bo uh, ballet physics right here. Okay, and then we can draw a circle for ex uh, sphere, for example, with GLU sphere function and this GLU sphere function waiting for the quad as the first parameter, the radius as the second parameter, so 1.0 for example, and then the horizontal and the vertical basically resolution, so make it 30-30, and now in theory we should be able to compile compile this project then normally as we would compile an OpenGL project and run this and uh, and after set the color to some color which we can see GL color 3 yeah, for example let's make it red we can see our uh, our sphere so if I run the program right now the sphere will be there uh, the, the in the zero 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 coordinate of course you can use translate and rotation to move wherever you want it to be moved okay you can set the radius obviously the resolution of the sphere basically the vertical and the horizontal resolution the higher number the more sphere like it is or uh, you can create other things like cylinders by using the function glu cylinder the first parameter again is the quadric, the second, third and fourth parameter are the extent of the, the, the cylinder, so for example 1.0, 1.0 and 5.0, and the next parameter is the horizon, uh, is the resolution, uh, the resolution, so how many, uh, each of the circles on the bottom and the top, how many vertexes there are, and finally in the top, uh, so uh, so in uh, vertical, so horizontally, how many uh, subdivisions there are. So, so like that. Here is the cylinder, and uh, okay, cylinder. And the first parameter is how well this circle is. So how many vertexes there are in this uh, in this circle. And the next is, so the last parameter is how many subdivisions there are between the top and the bottom. So for example, there could be one here, then you should write two, or there could be uh, subdivisions like this, then you should write uh, three, or maybe three, two. 
something. Okay, so if I run this program right now, then it should, uh, if I write a D right here, then it should compile and draw a cylinder for us. Okay, uh, right there, somewhere. Oh, there. As you can see, it is a cylinder, one by one by five cylinder. Of course, you could uh, make the second one to zero and make a cone instead of a cylinder. And now we have a, a cone, as you can see. Okay, so these are few basic shapes which you can draw with uh, this GLU quadric, very simple, without having to load an OBJ file or using very complicated mathematics to draw this. I just wanted to show you as a preview, uh, because we will later on need to create these kind of shapes. But now let's go into the actual bullet physics stuff before we get into way too much OpenGL, because bullet physics supposed to be a kind of platform and uh, library independent. So as long as you can run C++ code and you have any kind of 3D library, you should be okay with bullet physics. So uh, let's go into the bullet physics stuff. First of all, we need to create a word. Actually, I will not create the word right here. I will just create a pointer right here in globally. So I can access it from the init, from the display and from other functions. So that's why I will going to make a few variable global. I know global is not the best way to put variables, but for now I, this is the simplest way. Later on we will make a class for it, because we need a lot of uh, dynamic allocation and dynamic uh, allocation, and the class constructor and destructor will easily handle this. But for this simple first example, let's just make it global. So we will create a BT dynamic dynamics world. This is our kind of world which we are going to create. If you go here to the, not here, this, this is not that, uh, but here in the to your bullet physics folder and to the source code bullet dynamics and dynamics here you will find all of the different kind of words which you can create and uh, and we are going to create a bt discrete dynamic word this uh, discrete dynamic word is pretty much uh, discrete because it has discrete steps and the dynamic word, and it is uh, inherited from this BT dynamic word. So thanks to polymorphism, we can store this discrete dynamic word in here is the dynamic word. So if I open up this file, you can see that this is uh, indeed inherited from the BT dynamic word, and it has a lot of stuff in it. We are only interested in the constructor for now. As you can see, it's waiting for exactly for parameters. And uh, this seems very scary at first because it has uh, long names, but actually it, they are very easy to create. And basically we need to just create a variable and just set their default values. So I will show you that in a moment. So in the OpenGL.cpp we create a, D, a BT Dynamics word. By the way, all class names in Bullet Physics starts with the letter BT, uh, like Bullet. And then the name of whatever class we have with all capitalized first, first letters and not capitalize the rest of the letters. And usually in bullet physics, every class has a very long descriptive name, like BT discrete dynamic word. It's a very long and descriptive name. Discrete if you, pro if you know uh, a little bit of, uh, I don't know, physics or guess English, then discrete pretty much means that uh, it's, uh, it's not continuous. So for example, every 160th second, it's make a collision check, like we have in our FDS game. Okay, so the BT dynamic, dynamics word, and I just call it word. The next is, actually we need these four kind of different variables, one of all of them, so a dispatcher, so BT dispatcher, and I just call it dispatcher. We don't really need to go into what each of these does, I will just uh, give you a basic idea. So this BT dispatcher, you can set basically the collision algorithm between each of the stuff. Again, if you go here into this bullet library, you will find the manual right here somewhere, right here, the bullet manual, and here you can find a, a simple table. Uh, here it is, which basically uh, set what uh, collision algorithm should be used. So for example, between a box and a box, the box box collision detection should be used. Between the box and the sphere, the sphere box collision detection should be used. So it is logically filled in, there is no reason to change any of this, so we will just use the default. Later on, in, I will initialize in the init function as the BT default collision dispatcher. Okay, the next thing is that uh, we need the broad phase. 
So the broad phase is pretty much half to do the collision algorithm between the objects because we can use the way we would use in uh, in uh, normal so as we used in the FPS game so every single object with every single other object so if there are spheres like this then we will just go through every single object with double for loop and with n square so I don't know how many uh, how many are here eight then with 64 steps we have checked with everything every single possible pair but there are much more efficient ways like using a quad tree which is called BT DBVT broad phase I guess I believe so so here for example separate stuff up like that and we don't have to check everything just the objects which are in one uh, grid basically so for example if there are two on here then we just have to check these two we know that for example between this object and this object there could be no collision because they are way far away so we don't have to care about that there is a convenient class for this as well so we uh, so we just initialize initiate that qu a class instantiate that class and we don't have to worry about that so bt broad phase interface and I just call it broad phase <coughs> okay the next is uh, the constraint solver this is pretty much what uh, calculates everything so it calculates how much force it should apply after collision and so on so we don't really have to care about that as well either because there are the default con uh, default constraint solver and that will just work as well so bt const constraint solver and I just call it the solver, whatever. Okay, and one last thing is remaining. If you look at the he header file, the collision configuration. It again has something to do with the collision dispatcher. You can uh, fine tune the algorithm which sh should be used uh, for collision detection, uh, for collision uh, uh, detection and response. So just create a BT collision uh, configuration pointer configuration pointer and I just call it collision config all right we have that so we initial uh, so we have the pointer for all of these and actually let's fill them in immediately in the init function so let's first make the collision configuration so collision config and just set it to the default because as I said the defaults are working very well there is no absolutely no need to actually set ev uh, anything other than the default uh, except if you want to use uh, something very fancy okay so bt default collision config configuration as I said there are very de uh, there is very long name actually uh, we should use the new okay so it has a very long name and I will dynamically allocate that the names are pretty descriptive so this is the default and as I said there is no need to use any other okay let's make the second as the dispatcher so dispatcher and this is equal to the new BT collision dispatcher okay and just pass the first so this collision config into here as a parameter and you are pretty much done with this one as well so again the default is very good there is absolutely no need to change anything in this dispatcher like you you can ch you could change the algorithm which could be used here so I don't know use sphere sphere collision detection instead of box box to collision detection or something the next thing is to initialize the broad phase so broad phase and just again use the default uh, use the dbvt broad phase so dbvt broad phase and actually with not capitalized p like that okay this dbvt broad phase is pretty much that tree i showed you right here in game so it's uh, pretty much divide the space into uh, uh, different kind of uh, so in different sizes and then it uh, really uh, makes the collision detection much less uh, expensive there are two other kind of things which you can uh, which is inherited from this B BT broad phase interface there is a single simple broad phase or similar to that I have not used that this is the everything with everything algorithm like we use in the FPS game so a double for loop and go through every single possible pair and check for collision this is not too effective I don't recommend you to use it the other thing is there is this axis sweep or something like that I have not used that either in the demos in the ballet physics library right here the demo uh, in the demos it is often used this is the axis sweep uh, the disadvantage that you have to know the size of your map so of your uh, of your word at previously 
I will not going to use that, but uh, you can use that uh, if you want so, so just check the da demo if you want to know how to use it. Basically just uh, again in, uh, instantiate a new class uh, with, uh, with this BT axis sweep uh, free class right here, so just uh, instantiate a class and it will work as you would uh, wait. In theory it has a bit better performance than the BVT broad, uh, broad face, but it is working. Ok, and one last thing is remaining before we can create our word is to make the solver. So solver equal, again I'm going to use one of the defaults which is BT sequential, sequential impulse constraint solver. Ok, it has a very long and scary name, but don't worry, we just have to in inst instantiate it and it's, it will work as we would expect. Ok, there, uh, there could be other thing if you want to use the OpenCEL or something to do, um, so to do multi-threading, but for now this will be alright. Ok, finally after this free initialization we can make the word. So these are pretty much the default values and we will not change any, actually we will change some of them later on when we will use the soft body, but uh, other than that it's pretty much the same. So don't worry about this too much. Ok, so let's create the word, new bt uh, discrete dynamic word. Ok, so this is it and we have to just pass the parameter in the right order, so first the dispatcher and then the broad phase broad phase and after the broad phase the constraint solver so a solver and finally we have to pass the collision configuration and pretty much that's it we have the word okay and one thing which you will always do uh, after you created the word is set the gravity so set the gravity is pretty simple just set gravity, you just call this function, and here it's waiting for the, a vector. It's, it's like a vector 3D object which we have created for the FPS game, except this is in bullet physics, and this is called BT Vector 3. This is, as I said, it's almost identical to the vector 3D class which we have created, the constructor waiting for three parameters for the x, y, and z coordinate, so it makes 0, minus 10, 0, this is about the gravity on Earth, about uh, 10 meter, uh, meter per second, in uh, down, so that's why the minus sign are there. Ok, and we have actually have the word, and in here, in the update function, for example right here in the main, we can call the step simulation function for the word, so word and step sim simulation, and this is waiting for the time elapsed since the last frame, I have 60 frames per second right here, I just set it to 60 instead of 30 which was earlier, and if we have 60 frames in a second, then we have 1 divided by 60 uh, time between each frame. So this is the elapsed time since the last frame. Of course you can calculate the elapsed time by using this start variable right here and just calculate how much time it has been elapsed. An important thing right here, you should give it as a uh, second, so not milliseconds right here, like here like as, as the delay waiting for milliseconds, the SEP simulation, oops, that's the wrong function actually, here, the SEP simulation is actually waiting for, uh, waiting uh, the elapsed time in seconds. Alright, that was it, we have a working simulation already. One thing although is that we do not have anything to simulate, we should add a few stuff. And actually we should delete that lot of stuff which we have created up there, so just delete the dispatcher, and then delete the collision config, then delete the, what else did we have, the solver, delete the word, and uh, delete the broad phase. Ok, so we have to delete all of this stuff because we have dynamically allocated it, and as you probably know, it's a very bad thing not to delete stuff, which we have dynamically allocated. Ok, so right here in the init we already have stuff. Now we should actually let's add a static object, so for example a ground. For now the ground will be a simple plane, of course later on you can set it as a height map and other things, but the simple plane should do the trick right now. Now I don't... I will not create a function for this, because there will be only one plane. This is kind of infinite plane, it is only for testing and debugging purposes in bullet physics, but this is one of the simplest things we can create. 
and then let's start it. So, first of all, we need to define the position which we are going to use. To define the position, we have to use a, a simple structure called B, a BT transform. This BT transform is pretty much an orientation and a position. So basically, it contains a rotation in a quaternion, which is uh, it's, you can think of it as a 3D matrix, and a vector which uh, uh, <coughs> containing the uh, position. Okay, so first of all, we should uh, we should set the identity. So t dot set identity. So it's pretty much set back the position to zero 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 and the orientation to zero 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 one, which is for quaternion pretty much meaning there is no rotation at all. Okay, right here we should set the position. So t dot set origin. This is a function that, where you can set the origin. So basically this is the position where you want the plane. And we just put it to zero, zero, zero coordinate and there will be a, it will be a good place for that. Okay, the next thing which we are going to do is basically set the shape which we are going to use. Later on, for example, for spheres and boxes, you can, you have to use different kind of shapes. For example, for spheres, you have the BT sphere shape. For box, you have the BT box shape. So, just logically, for the planes, you have the BT static plane shape. Okay, this is the shape for a plane. Okay, and uh, it's a static plane, it's an infinite plane, basically, not planes like we did in um, uh, the FPS game. So, this is infinitely in every direction. Okay, so you have to allocate it uh, dynamically because uh, the rigid body need it as, uh, so need it to be exist. And if it is not allocated dynamically, then the end of this init function, this is pretty much destroyed and we will get a few errors or crashes, basically. So, let's just make a new BT static plane shape. Okay, this function actually waiting for two parameters, a vector, which is defining the normal vector of the plane, so BT BT vector 3, so the normal vector, this is 0, 1, 0, so basically this plane is looking upward, and then we need to set the uh, a number as the second parameter, a BT color, basically, a BT color, you will see that in a lot of demos, if you check out the demos, it is probably, it is a float or double, depending if you have uh, compiled it as a double precision library, then this is a double, as it is a float. I will just press zero in here, so basically it means that we have a plane on the x, z axis, because it's look upward, the normal vector, and the distance from this uh, original point, uh, the origin point is zero, so it basically lies on the x, z axis. Alright, and then we have to just create a motion shape. Uh, it's a bit hard to explain what motion shape is, but uh, pretty much this is how you can uh, set the uh, motions and positions to an object. Although in case of static, uh, although in case of the static plane shape, you can already set the position right here with this uh, zero variable and the normal vector. For other shapes, you can set the position in the constructor. For example, for spheres, you just give the radius and you can have uh, set the position in the constructor of the shape. You have to use this motion shape. So again, it's pretty simple to make BT motion state and this motion state uh, uh, should be dynamically allocated as well. So new BT default motion shape. It's pretty long, you have to get used to this kind of uh, class names. But uh, I, uh, but it's time as you create more and more stuff, it will be uh, you will get used to it. Okay, and it's waiting for one parameter, which is this transform right here, the BT transform. So basically, the position and the rotation. Okay, now we have this motion. Now uh, two more things to go before we can add this body to the world. Is first create a, co a rigid body construction info. Uh, okay, so let me just create that. So it is inside the BT. So the BT rigid body class, if I go here and uh, let's just do a search for uh, rigid body, rigid, okay, right here in the BT rigid body dot H and right here you will find a new uh, structure created in the public called BT rigid body construction info. As you can see, you can set a lot of stuff in here, the mass, the motion and so on, so a lot of stuff you can actually set. Later on we will take a look, you can um, find restitution and friction, you may want to uh, said this kind of stuff, 
but uh, for now let's just use the constructor and set whatever we need to set the mass the motion state uh, collision shape and the interior okay so these are the four parameters the first the mass so bt rigid body construct construction info and i just call it info you don't need to dynamically allocate this one because uh, this will be copied in the bt rigid body so i will not uh, uh, dynamically allocate it the first parameter is the mass the mass is an interesting thing if you set it to zero this will be static so uh, whatever object you set the mass to zero exactly zero it will be static and anything else than zero so basically greater than zero because negative mass doesn't make sense so great any mass greater than zero will be dynamic Okay, so set the set it to a static because it's a, it's a static plane. Okay, so it will not react to gravity and forces and so on. So it is static. Anything with mass of zero is static. Okay, the next is the motion state. The motion state is uh, the motion state we have created in the last co in the last line. So right here, the motion state. Okay, the next is the collision shape. The collision shape is pretty much the shape you have created. As you can see, it's waiting for BT collision shape. But all of the collision shape have, uh, but all of the collision shapes are actually inherit from this BT collision shape. So you can just press this plane into here. Okay, the last parameter is default, which is uh, the local interior. As you can see, it is a BT vec uh, which is a zero zero zero. So it's a local interior. For now, let's not use this local interior for anything. The zero 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 will be good for a static body for dynamic body we need to use the function called uh, calculate local interior to actually calculate the interior all right now we have the info so we can actually create the body so bt rigid body and i just called it uh, body doesn't really matter and and i just create a new bt rigid body okay with this info okay almost there we have one more thing to do is to actually add this to the world so word which we have created up here which is the discrete dynamic word and this has a function add rigid body and this add rigid body is basically just add the uh, we just uh, pass whatever body do we want to add and i like to do one more thing is to uh, store all of our bodies in a vector so let me just create a vector std vector with the, the bt rigid body bt rigid body pointer and i just call it bodies okay and let me just add this body which we have created to these bodies so bodies dot push back and the body so i will add to this body so later on it will be easier to free everything as you can see we have uh, three new uh so three new dynamic calls the, uh, the uh, shape the motion state and the rigid body itself and later on we can go through with a for loop the bodies and we can get the shape and the motion from that body we can delete those two and also delete the rigid body itself so we will not have a problem okay so one more uh, once uh, so we have created and added this plane of course it is not rendered yet but so the steps which we have to do is first create a transform the transform is pretty much uh, where uh, where do we want the body and what rotation do we want the body because we set the identity we have pretty much zero rotation and we actually have a, and i actually set it manually to the zero position this is the center of the object the center of the mass basically okay then i create whatever shape do i want for example sphere box static plane cone and so on you can add a lot of kind of stuff in ballet physics for now we will just use the simple uh, kind of objects like sphere and cylinder and cone and li uh, some, uh, like that okay the next is the motion state which is pretty much just uh, set the position as our perspective inside the class it does interpolation as well for you but you don't have to really know about that or care about that okay the rigid body construction info is pretty much the body definition if you have seen my box 2d tutorial you can set all kind of different stuff right here like the mass the motion the plane and the bunch of other kind of different uh, st uh, stuff right here we don't really care about this for now so we will just simply add this all right and uh, and then we can create the body and finally add the body to the world so now we have one body in the world okay and i will actually create a function which will add a simple sphere to the world for now i decided not to add anything else just sphere and plane so i will create a bt uh, sphere this will be the return value 
and I just call it add sphere. Okay, this add sphere function will actually waiting for the radius of the sphere, obviously, so float radius. It will waiting for the position, so float x, float y, float float z and finally it's waiting for the mass so float mass we don't need a separate variable to tell whether uh, it has to be static or not because if the mass is exactly zero then this is a static object if the mass is not zero then this is a dynamic object so the the steps are similar actually so similar then i will just copy and paste these into here like that and uh, and we have to change what shape do we have because obviously we don't ha want to make a plane right now but we want to create a sphere to create a sphere we use the bt sphere shape uh, class and pointer okay the bt sphere shape pointer actually waiting for the radius of the uh, the sphere and that's all it doesn't wait for the position that's why we have to set the position with the, the bt transform so x y z okay right here i just set the x y z coordinate so this free uh, line right here we just set the position zero rotation and x y z coordinate we don't need to convert it to meters and stuff like that okay the next stuff which we need to change is actually right here we have to pass the mass right here as the first parameter not zero zero meaning that uh, it is a static object but it not does not necessarily a static object Okay, and as I mentioned, there is this last parameter in the BD rigid body construction info right here. The last body is this local in inertia. Okay, this local inertia is basically calculated with the function. It is in every uh, shape function, so it's, uh, it's inherited from the BT collision sh uh, shape function. This function is called uh, calculate local inertia. Okay, so let me actually call that, but only call that if it is a dynamic body. If it is a static body, we don't care, the zero, zero, zero should be okay. So, let me create a vector, B uh, BT vector uh, free, and I just call it inertia. Okay, just set it zero, zero, zero. Okay, so if the body is static, so if the mass is not equal to zero, I will only call the calculate local interior in that case. If the body is static, then this should be zero, zero, zero. Okay, so uh, actually let me rename this to sphere because uh, it might be confusing if I let it to be plain. So sphere and it has a l function calculate local inertia. Okay, and it's waiting for two parameters actually. One parameter is the actual mass, so mass. And the second parameter is this vector right here, actually a reference to this vector, so I just passed it the inertia. Okay, and it will calculate the inertia, whatever that is, into this inertia vector, so we can just pass it as a last parameter. So let me rename this to sphere and inertia. Right, that's uh, almost everything which we had to do. And, uh, and we are pretty much finished. We have to just return with this body because as I have said, I will return with a BT, actually, what am I doing? This is a BT rigid body. Sorry about that. So BT rigid body, which is our rigid body. So this add sphere function will add the sphere. Let's add the sphere immediately to our simulation. So right here in the init, after I have added the plane, I will call this add sphere function with the radius of one and then the second parameter should be the x, y at the x coordinate and then the y z coordinate so let's make it 0, 20, 0 so let's make a sphere 20 meters above ground okay and the last parameter is the mass let's make it a dynamic body with one kilogram of mass okay I have added a sphere we have almost finished we just need to render this sphere so let's make another function which will render a sphere this will be a void function and I just call it render sphere okay and I will show you how to render a sphere actually let's wait the sphere right here so bt rigid body pointer and I just call it sphere okay to render a sphere I'm going to use the glu sphere so this glu quadric object which I have showed you in the beginning of this tutorial but First of all, let's check if it is really a sphere, because we don't want to render something which is not sphere as a sphere, because that will be a crash in our program. So let me first check. So if sphere, and I can get the collision shape, so get collision shape with this getter function, and then I ha there is a variable 
uh, actually a function, which is a getter function, which we return what is the type of this shape. So get shape type. Okay, so this get shape type will return whatever shape this uh, this uh, BT rigid body has. There are different kind of shapes, as I mentioned, there are boxes, and there are cylinders, there are spheres, there are more complicated objects like compound objects, which are made of these simple objects, but there are even more complex objects like height field and so on. So, uh, the sphere is called sphere shape proxy, proxy type. Okay, so this BT sphere proxy type is pretty much a constant, which is, I don't know, it has some value, and if this uh, rigid body was a sphere, then this has to have the sphere shape proxy type uh, as the shape type. So if it is not the sh uh, sphere shape proxy type, then I just return from this function. If it is not a sphere, but someone wanted to call the f this function to render as a sphere, we just return, we don't care about that. Okay, next thing is, uh, let's actually set the color. So GL color free f, and I just set it to be red, so we can easily see the spheres. Now, the next thing is to actually get the radius from this. To get the radius in the BT sphere shape, if I just open that, uh, open that up, so sphere shape, if I open up the BT sphere shape, there is a function called get radius, right here, get radius, as you can see. But there is a problem, we have a BT rigid body, but it is not a BT sphere shape. To convert it uh, to a BT sphere shape, I can easily cast it, because uh, I know that this is a BT sphere shape, it is only seems to be a rigid body because of the polymorphism. So BT sphere shape, and I call the, and I convert the sphere and get collision shape. So this, uh, actually, this is collision shape type, not a sphere shape type, so sorry about that. Uh, I don't cast the rigid body into a sphere shape, but I guess uh, I will cast the collision shape to a sphere shape. Okay, so I casted this into a sphere shape. And now the sphere shape, there is a function called get radius. So get radius. Alright, so we have the radius, let me actually create a variable for that float r equal to the radius. Okay, the next thing to do is to actually get the motion state, uh, the transform, get the transform. So, bt transform, I just create this variable and I just call it t, like transform. And to get the transform, I have to use the sphere, and then I get the motion state from it, so get motion state. This return back this motion state, whatever we have created right here in the add sphere, as you can see, we have created this bt transform. And we return with this bt transform with the function called get word transform get word transform and i just return it to t so this is the reference now this t actually is uh, is filled up with the current sphere position and the current sphere rotation now we only need to find a way to actually apply that translation and rotation stuff to our sphere before we draw it to do so we can have a a few different kind of choice. We can either get the tr uh, translation and rotation from this uh, transform. Let me actually open that up so you can see how many chances you have. So transform, you can have a lot of, it has a lot of different function to get uh, the whatever stuff are in here. So for example, we can have we can use the get origin function to get the x, y, z origin, and also we have this get basis, uh, not this get basis, uh, yeah, this get basis function, and the get basis is a 3 by 3 matrix, and you can get the Euler x, y, z coordinate. But there is a much easier way. If we go down here, there is a function called get OpenGL matrix. Probably you have already known, if you're using OpenGL, that OpenGL uses matrices. And uh, this matrix is basically define everything, the position and rotation and scaling of every single object. Now, this get OpenGL matrix, we return f with this matrix. We only need to multiply the current model view matrix with this, and we are pretty much good to go. So whenever I use uh, GL translate F, or a function or GL rotate f or GL scale f, this basically multiply the current open GL matrix with whatever we press in here. So with this x, y, z, it's, uh, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, if we are multiplying the current matrix with this matrix, so let me actually get this and show you that will be easier. So t dot get open 
OpenGL matrix and it's waiting for one parameter which is a um, which is an array with 16 elements so float m and with 16 elements 16 elements because as you probably know OpenGL matrices are 4x4 four four matrices and 4x4 four four is uh, 16 so just pass this matrix pointer right here and now you have the OpenGL matrix so let me actually use the GL push matrix so we will not screw up our transformation matrix and GL pop matrix right here. So it will so this matrix multiplication will be only applied to this one sphere, not everything else. So GL mult matrix F. This is a function I don't believe I have used it earlier, but this is very simple. It just multiply the current matrix with a matrix you just pass here. So if I just press the matrix uh, here, which we have cr uh, get from this get open GL matrix, this will multiply the current model view matrix or your current matrix mode, but we are in uh, model view matrix uh, usually. So it will just uh, multiply the model view matrix with this matrix. So basically what you need to know about this line is set the, the translation translation and the rotation okay now that we have this we n have nothing else to do just render the sphere so GLU sphere okay the first parameter is the radius which we have calculated which we have get right here with this get radius function the second uh, actually the first parameter is the quadric object second parameter is the radius third and fourth parameter is the resolution so no it's just set it 2020 20, and it should be okay Okay, and I'm pretty sure we are finished with this render sphere function. So again, here I just set, I just check if it is really a sphere. If it is not a sphere, like we don't want to render a cylinder like a sphere, we want to render a cylinder like a cylinder. Okay, then I just set, uh, get the radius of the sphere, and I convert, I uh, will cast this collision shape, so BT collision shape to a BT sphere shape. I can do that because this BT sphere shape is actually inherited from the from the convex internal shape and the convex internal shape is actually inherited from BT collision shape. Uh, okay, so I can cast this to a sphere shape because I know it is a sphere because I have checked in here uh, in the first line that this is actually a sphere. Alright, then I just get the word transformation and I get the OpenGL matrix from this. So OpenGL matrix is pretty much storing the rotation and translation of each object. So I just use this matrix multiplication to actually apply this translation and rotation to the current object, of course between push and pop matrix, so we will only apply this translation and rotation to this object, not every other object. Okay, and then I just simply render the sphere. That was the render sphere function. Of course, you have to make a render cylinder function, a render box function, because they are rendered differently. Now that we have this part, we can we are almost finished with the first example. Actually, let me make a render plane function as well because we already have a plane right here. We have created a plane, a static plane. To render a static plane, that will be very simple because it is almost the same as the render sphere. Actually, it's all, uh, so much the same. I will actually copy and paste this into here. Okay. The thing which we have to ch uh, change is that this is called static plane proxy type. So static plane proxy type. That's right, this is the type. Okay, so check if it is a... Uh, actually, let me rename this to plane. So I will check if it is really a plane and I will render it as, as a plane if it is a plane. Okay, set the color, I will set to 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, so it's a very light gray color. Okay, a sphere don't have a radius, so we can actually delete this line right here and the rest of the line is staying but here instead of rendering a sphere I will render a plane I will use immediate mode to render the plane because that's the quickest so GL begin GL quads and right here GL and and I will just render a thousand by a thousand plane so GL vertex 3F minus 1000 zero thousand so this is basically the left uh, farther point then GL vertex 3F, then I get minus thousand, zero, minus thousand. This is the the left uh, closer plane, uh, closer vertex, then GL vertex 3F, and thousand, zero, and minus thousand, and finally GL vertex 3F, yep, the V is capital, 3F, and this should be 
thousand zero and thousand okay I have just rendered the simple plane and let me see if I need to change anything I will change it to plane instead of sphere okay change this one as well and change this and yes that's pretty much it I have rendered a plane so now I can go uh, wait a bit uh, no it's okay okay so now one last thing is remaining is go through all of the objects and render them so as you probably remember we store all of the bodies in a in a bodies array a vector right here bodies vector which is storing all of the rigid bodies so I can use a for loop to go through all of these there is other ways to do that the, from the word you can query actually all of the uh, object but it is the easiest way so in i equals zero i less than the bodies the size i plus plus so go through all of the bodies and just check what bodies they are so if bodies i and again I get the collision shape from that get collision shape and then I get the shape type get shape type from these and I just uh, uh, compare them to different kind of stuff by the way this is the same line as this one right here so get the shape type so I will just uh, uh, first of all let's see if it is a static plane proxy type so if it is a static plane proxy type then I just use the render plane function with the bodies bodies i okay and as if we have one uh, different kind of object which is actually a sphere we don't add that anything else yet later on we will but for now I will only have spheres and uh, planes so this is the sphere shape proxy type sphere underscore shape proxy type and then I call the render sphere function right here render sphere and again I add the bodies i to it okay and that was it so again check if it is render sphere render plane and I'm pretty sure we are finished one last thing is remaining although that we should include the bullet header file so include and we only have to include the header file which is at the top so right here if I go here th we need to inclu uh, include this was an accident we need to include this bullet dynamic common dot h so I have actually the header file if you remember from the first tutorial I have created a source folder so right here in my USR folder right here in the include I have created a folder called bullet right here bullet and in this bullet fo folder I have this com uh, dynamics common header file so I need to include uh, I need to include the bullet slash bt dynamics common dot h header file but if you are using uh, for example bullet uh, for example code blocks for this bullet physics you may have not created this bullet folder but you actually just uh, I don't know copy this uh, bullet folder or something so just make sure that you can somehow access to this actually this is bt bullet dynamics command just realized so just make sure that somehow you can access to this header file uh, so you might if you use code blocks and you have just uh, uh, set this source folder as your include folder paths then you need don't need this bullet and you have to write it like that so it it depends on how you use it okay now the most interesting moment of all the things come is that we have to test actually if this work or not my guess is not but we will see so I will compile everything with the LFDL, LGL, LGLU and LFDL underscore image flags these are the normal things which, I'm go which I have used to compile an OpenGL pro program but we also need the L uh, bullet soft body and then L bullet dynamics and then the L bullet uh, collision and finally the L bullet linear math, had, uh, math library files to compile this project and as I said in the, big, uh, in the first tutorial you need to add the dash i slash if you are using command line in code blocks if you have uh, set the include path correctly you don't need to do anything else so slash usr slash uh, include slash bullet else it will not work okay so now that I have added this we have the error which we have to fix so from right here 
Okay, OpenGL at CPP line 14, G, uh, uh, BT broad phase interface. I'm pretty sure that P is not capitalized. Okay, line 22. Line 22, oh, of course, the BT set origin doesn't wait for free numbers, but it's waiting for the BT vector free, which is basically the vector class of the bullet physics. Right, okay, so line 28, default motion, motion state, not motion shape. So line 22, uh, I mean 28, motion state, not shape, state. Right, I hope I don't screw up in the other places. Uh, okay, so line 77, right here, 77. Broad phase, of course, this is fixed already. PT sequential impulse constraint solver. I have left, uh, left the new right here, so new. Okay, and line 84. Again, I screwed up here as well. We should use the BT vector free, uh, BT vector free class, which is the vector class of the bullet physics. 86. Oh, I screwed up right here as well. So state. Well, right. And 126 render plane function was not declared. That's probably because the P should be capitalized. Render plane. And, uh, and I think the other was already so let's try it again okay a linear mass that is because we do not have the bullet right here just simple linear mass instead of bullet linear mass okay it is compiled so now if I can run it then indeed here is our sphere and incredible we have a sphere uh, one more thing actually before I go and finish up with this tutorial because it is almost finished uh, is actually I want to add a shooting segmentation error Something is not uh, deleted in the right order. Maybe we should delete the broad face before the word, like that. Okay, and uh, we should always also delete the object. I, om uh, I have almost forget. So I just use a for loop. So for int i equals zero. I left them bodies. Bodies dot size i plus plus. So go through all of the objects, and then in here, I just remove the object. So word and remove collision object which is uh, removing one object from the word and I just remove the body's eye so I just remove the object next thing to do is get the motion state from it so BT motion state pointer and motion state and to get the to get it we I use the get motion state function which I've already used that so body's I and get motion get motion state Okay, and I should also get the shape from it. So BT collision shape pointer shape equals to bodies I and uh, get collision shape. So these, uh, this uh, motion state and collision shape were two things which we have dynamically allocated, if you remember. So if I go here to the add sphere, as you can see, I have dynamically allocated the motion state and also I have dynamically allocated the shape. So the motion state and the shape. So I will delete these two stuff. So delete the bodies. So a bloody, not the bodies, body. Delete the shape and also delete the motion state. Motion state. Right. So we free everything which we have reserved right here. Although it's work without it, but uh, always uh, free whatever you have uh, uh, used. Uh, dynamically allocated. Okay, right here, if I press the space, I want to shoot out a sphere, because this is one of the simplest way to interact with the world by sh shooting. Okay, so case, and if the space key is pressed, so SDLK space, then I will just add a sphere, so add sphere, the add sphere function, if I remember correctly, waiting for a radius, then it's waiting for the x, y, z coordinate. I want to shoot from my current position, so cam.get location which is if you remember the camera is our camera the get location getting the location of the camera so I get the x y z coordinate coordinate from the camera so x y z from the camera and finally it's waiting for the mass I don't know let's make it one for now okay and I will also want to set the velocity of the sphere so it will go forward go where I look to where I look it we can easily determine that I will use the get vector function so uh, this is a uh, 
vector 3D and look. Uh, so I will use the cam.getVector function and multiply it by 20 for example. So uh, the higher this number the more force it will have with the shoot. And finally the last thing to do is that is that uh, BT rigid body equal uh, sphere. Okay, so I just get the return value from the add sphere function, which is obviously our sphere, and then I apply this so sphere, and there is a function called set linear velocity, which is setting the linear velocity. Okay, it's waiting for a vector, which is uh, the our look vector, so BL vector free. Uh, and it's waiting for the look.x, look.y, and look.z. Perfect. Okay, so in theory, if everything goes correctly, we will get the uh, current coordinate of the camera, and then we put a sphere there. And then we will shoot out this sphere with this much of force, so say 20 newton of force, I don't know, guess. And then I set the linear velocity, which is basically the velocity of the sphere, to, to this vector, so the higher the so the higher this number is, the more force we will apply to that object. Uh, let's write. Seems like compiled. So if we run it right now, we will find a sphere, and as you can see, I can shoot out spheres. Not too interesting so far, but uh, we are definitely getting somewhere. So I can shoot out spheres. Okay, this shouldn't happen in the reality, but you know, computers are perfect. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching and have a great day.